Hi guys, um, Terry here again. Um, in this video, I'm going to be looking at question six in the January 2022 CSEC, um, chemistry, um, CSEC physics paper. Sorry. Um, all right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, right, I am the author of all these books here, but especially the Cape Physics Unit One and Unit Two. The book that is being shared freely online for whatever reason, right? Um, so I'm gonna look at question question six, right? So question six here, right? Um, what is meant by the nucleus of an atom? Now the nucleus of an atom is simply the central part of an atom, right? Which is very small and dense, right? So we can see. Um, the central part of an atom right that is very small and dense right um, it contains the protons and neutrons of the atom right now the reason why i'm given that that extra piece of information here because i'm seeing three marks here so chances are they want a little more in this answer right um, part B, we have radon 222, radioactive nuclei decay spontaneously with the mission of an alpha particle to form polonium, right? So this is something that I always teach my students. They need to understand what is meant by the word random and what is meant by spontaneous. Random has to do with the unpredictable nature of radioactive decay. So if you are looking at a sample of a radioactive uh, material, Right? It's difficult for us to predict when it's going to happen or which atom is going to decay. Um, the word spontaneous means it occurs on its own accord, right? meaning that it is not affected by factors external to the nucleus. Right? So spontaneous here means that it occurs on its own. Right? And it's not affected by factors external to the nucleus right so that's that for one mark right and the next thing they want they want you to determine the value of a and um, z now, when you have a, a decay equation like this, right, what has to happen is that your total mass number on your left side must equal the total mass number on the right side. So that means that 222 on the left must equal to A plus 4. So therefore, A has to be 222 minus 4, right? And that here is going to give me, right, that should give me what, 218? Yeah, that should be 218, right? So this here is going to be 218. So that's the answer for this here, 218. Easy one mark. The next part, you want to figure out what is Z. So your total atomic number on the left side, which is 86, is equal to Z plus 2. So therefore, Z is equal to 86 minus 2, which is equal to 84. So that is what this is equal to here, right? The next part, um, we have some mass information here, and they've given us the mass in kilograms, and they want us to figure out what is the energy right um, released in this reaction. So this is a nuclear reaction here, and what we need to do is to find our mass defect. So you add up all the masses on the left, add up all the masses on the right, and when you subtract that, you're going to get your mass defect. So let's start on the... Well, we know what the mass on the left side is, right? As the, um, the read on. On the right hand side, so all we need to do, we need to add these two figures here, right? 
and because it's a mass defect this mass here is going to be larger than the sum of those two masses right so your mass defect right is going to be your total mass on the left which is this big number here right um let's just copy that Right? So instead of me writing this and making a mistake here. So this is my total mass on the left side. On the right side now we have two masses to take care of. Right? That's the mass of the polonium. Right? And then we have the mass of the alpha particle. Right? So this is going to be your mass on the left minus, and we need to add up the total mass on the right hand side. Right? So we have to be careful how we enter in this in our calculator. Right? This is important. So let's see, let me show you what I'm doing here on my calculator. Right? Right, so let's let's work on this mass defect here now, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to right, so it's three six eight point five four nine one eight by ten to the minus twenty seven. So you're gonna press EXP twenty seven minus right, and now we're gonna subtract. And I'm going to use an open bracket here, right? Because I want to, I want the calculator to add up those two figures for me there. So that is 361.89489.27 plus 6.644. Right, by 10 to the 27, 10 to the minus 27. Close the brackets, equal. And I'm getting 9.63 by 10 to the minus 30. Right, 9.63 by 10 to the minus 30. Right, so let's get rid of that. No, let's leave the calculator there, right? Um, so that is 9.63 three by ten to the minus thirty kilograms right so that's your mass defect so if you want to get the energy released in the reaction now it's going to be e is equal to mc squared your mass is going to be nine point six three multiplied by ten to the minus thirty multiplied by your speed of light they give us that in the question that's three by ten to the eight Right? But one of the mistakes that students make is that they forget to square the speed of light. Right? So I'm gonna square the speed of light. I already have the mass here, right? Multiplied by 3 exp8. And we're gonna square that. And I'm gonna get 8.667 by 10 to the minus 30. So that's 8.667 by 10 to the minus 13. And this here has to be in joules right that's what that is that's in joules right so hope you all seen the answer there so that's my energy that is released in this particular reaction right 8.667 by 10 to the minus 30 and what else do we have here now we have something else to do right a fresh sample of radon 222 has a half-life so you know what the half-life of this thing is here it is three and a 3.8 d's right and the mass is 240 grams define the term half-life now lots of students mix up this definition and it's a very simple definition it is the average time taken for the activity 
of a sample to decrease by half its initial value. Right, so that's what half-life is. It's the average time taken for the activity to decrease by half its initial value, right? Now, in this question here, they said calculate the mass of radon remaining after 15.2 days, right? Now, they told us that the half-life of the sample here is 3.8 days. So what we need to do, we need to first figure out um, how many half-lives do we have in 15.2 days? Right, so your number of half lives right is going to be equal to 15.2 divided by 3.8, and that's going to give me four. That's four half lives, right. So what we're going to do, we're starting off with, um, what did we start off with? 240 grams, right? So you're starting off with a mass of 240 grams, right? So after one half-life, so this is one half-life here, you're going to have half that amount, which is 120 grams. So that's one half-life gone. Then we're going to go for a next half-life. Half of that is going to be 60 grams. Then we're going to go for a next half-life. Right, and you're gonna have half of that, so that's 30 grams. So that's three half lives gone, but we're trying to go over a period of four half lives. So we need to divide this again. So this is T a half, right? And this is gonna give you 15 grams. So the question said, what is the answer? Given your answer to two significant figures, right? So the mass that they're looking for at the end is going to be 15 grams, right? So that's my answer for this question here, right? So please hit like and subscribe, right? And those of you who need um, CSEC physics lessons, right? You can contact me via this number here, right? I have form four and form five classes, right? Um, so take care guys.